everyone and welcome back uh, to the third episode of Career Spotlights. Uh, we're here again on TV3 and uh, we've got another guest this week. Um, uh, just a reminder of what the podcast is about. Um, we look at different careers um, so that people can get insights into um, the different uh, pathways that people have taken. And research has shown that an average person um, has about 12 different jobs in their lifetime. Um, so it's not one career for life. Um, so the podcast is aimed at helping people of all ages um, to get um, a better understanding of the various jobs um, and how to um, access those jobs. jobs. Uh, so today we have um, Anna Patel, uh, who's a psychotherapist with us in the studio, um, and I'd just like to introduce her to you. Um, Anna, um, welcome, and um, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good, lovely. Um, so you you work as a psychotherapist, um, but could you tell us uh, just in, in, a, in a few words, what is a psychotherapist? Because there might be some of our viewers that are not quite sure what that is what type of career that is? Okay, so uh, sometimes uh, we say uh, counseling and psychotherapy sort of uh, t uh, together. Uh, counseling is just focusing on, on one uh, sort of issue and then addressing that. Uh, psychotherapy is much, much broader. Um, and much, much deeper and lengthier because it uses uh, psychological models to, to sort of address the situations or difficulties um, such as uh, self-harm, eating disorders, depression, anxiety, uh, separation loss, lots, all that package put together. And it's a very um, a lengthy, intensive um, uh, training um, which which really prepares us, enables us to sort of take take in what is like really, in other words, th uh, thrown in the sense at us we, within the session, anger, stress, all yeah. that to contain yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned that it's a lengthy career, but what's special about you is that you actually entered it at a much later stage in your life. So, can you tell us a little bit about your own journey with this um, profession? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, it was not until 53. Before that, it was like for 28 years, I had a, a, a shop, a, a news agents and a stationers um, on a high street. So I I had four uh, children, brought brought up my children uh, it, during that period, as well as, well as worked full time. Um, so that was my job. And after 28 years, when we just thought about retiring, um, and unwanted, you know, all traumas are unwanted, and they, they, it came into the family, and it sort of um, up, gave upheaval to all members of the family. Mm -hmm. And then we were trying to sort of, uh, you know, unwind, rewind from the years and years of work. And for a couple of years, it took us. Well, it took me, in a, the whole family, but me in a very deep place where, where it, I found initially to uh, difficult to come out of it and make sense of what was going on uh, and and um, trauma uh, just uh, uh, what trauma is it can be it, anything you know loss mental health in the family all kind of abuses domestic mm -hmm. violence so those kind of things i'm talking about yeah. and uh, yeah so so it really for two years um, it really took a lot of um, energy and thought from me and the experience that I had with the system because that's the first time I knew um, or I found out what what uh, psychotherapy or what systemic therapy is all about because mm -hmm. it's not well known in, in, in my life or where I come from. And uh, I was left, in fact, I was left feeling not understood because the meaning making, uh, there was a very gray area in that. So that mm -hmm. was on top of what I had experienced. And um, and so I came came out of that feeling with this heavy burden on, on me. Mm -hmm. And then in, in the two years, I just processed and I thought, now with this experience, where can I, what can I do? Yeah. And, and I thought, because it upset it, not just me, the whole family and everybody. So I looked into what I can do, uh, children's courses and things like that. And mm -hmm. it was a big step because I did not know really much about psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking you back with the age I was 53 and my days my era was different yeah. right? technology wise and I was returning back after 42 years <laughs> or so 
So it was really difficult. And I just searched through and I thought, OK, that's a child and adolescent psychotherapy. It's, it's different than just adult psychotherapy. We, we, we'll talk about that in a minute. And, and I thought, no, the child one addresses and can work with the all till adults. And that's how I started embarking mm -hmm. on this course. So what, what sort of courses did you actually do? You mentioned some child courses, but I mean, did you have to redo A-levels? Did you do a degree? Like what kind of courses did you actually do? Okay, so my, my studies uh, was still um, A-levels and, and then it was um, my, my marriage and all that. So I had studied A-levels. The good bit about this country and the good bit what they offer, uh, the knowledge and the learning, it's like, all the time you know so so we can go on this child and adolescent psychotherapy course if if we pass through the interview we have some knowledge of science and um, psycho psychology and how the human mind works mm -hmm. so now in a levels i had done um, physics chemistry and biology in this country so i think they looked at it and i went for a couple of tests and things and and that's how i started yeah, on yeah. this course um so with the science Sorry, yeah. with with the sciences, you you had a good yes. foundation to start yes. with, yeah. Yes, and that was about forty years ago, prior to when I started this course. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. There was so things would have changed break. over the years anyway. Um, oh, did you yes. did you do a degree after that, or how did you enter the profession then? Uh, this this is masters. This is leading to the masters because you you. Because I stopped at the A levels, I yeah. had to do the foundation, of course. So the foundation okay. is a tough um, foundation, actually. Yeah. That's what it means. And so it prepares us for the master's level. And right. each each level you have to really, it's a 50% pass. And, and that's how I embarked on, on this course. Mm -hmm. So we don't really need to do another. Well, people came with other degrees, but I didn't. I just right. did my A levels and went straight into that. At fifty-three, so you you entered it as a as a mature student, as a mature student, yes. English as a second language as well. So yeah, yeah. okay. Um, how how long did you study for before you actually ended up starting to work and 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 um earned a salary? Okay, so the course itself uh, uh, was like five years over the five years. Um, and uh, including the foundation. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do it straight away um, because I was just then at home and studying the course and, and just doing the requirements of the course. Mm -hmm. um, and straight after that, in a few months, we in August, I qualified. And by January, it took me some time to think because I've always been um, independent, uh, working in the shop. And uh, so I explored a little bit around me, not knowing much. Um, and then had my site up and ready. Um, and that's how I proceeded. You know, I just moved on from there. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. But and, the whole and how did you, how did you fund this? Like, did, were, did you have, um, did you have to pay for the courses? Were you entitled to funding? How did you manage the finance of putting yourself through education at this age? Okay. So, uh, like I mentioned that, uh, you know, we were preparing for the retirement and all that. So I, with, with, with the stores and uh, all the other stuff, I was not entitled to, I've never been entitled to any sort of funding and all that kind of thing. So, of course, it was from my uh, whatever we've earned together as mm -hmm. as a couple. And it's, it's a very expensive, uh, would you like me to say a little bit more about the training? Yeah, um, yeah just, just briefly, just so that viewers yeah. can have a bit of understanding if they were to explore this career path. Yeah, I mean, uh, once again, I can't stress that, you know, it was uh, for mature student and this is what I had. But for younger, you know, it, it, loans are available through organizations, whichever mm -hmm. they study mm -hmm. in and all sorts of things. So, so yeah, this is where I used um, or, you know, you know, whatever I had uh, within uh, my training. Like I said, it's a very intensive training. It has a lot of, um, uh, of course, you know, uh, responsibility and and really the commitment because um, it, it it you need to go for a personal therapy. It transforms a person really because each layer is kind of peeled and and worked at because we need to work with ourselves. So mm -hmm. it's about forty two hours, you know, every year uh, personal therapy, and it's it's. In short, it's like a psychological gym um, that yeah. we go through in order to then offer 
the best what we can offer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that our issues that do not get you know mingled into the client issues yeah yeah okay so so you've done your studying you've got your work as psychotherapist so what kind of um environments would you be working in so what sort of organizations what would that look like Okay, so whilst I was studying, because it's like a, a placement and uh, to be accredited and to have the master's, etc., we need to have certain amount of 500 or so clinical hours. So I had placements in, in various primary, secondary schools in the most deprived areas, different areas of London, and with all ages of children. As I did child and adolescent psychotherapy, uh, here I'll just expand a little bit that it gives me a privilege and I am really thankful for that um, because it includes the uh, uh, mother and baby observation, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. it is the early experiences, early start, non-verbal, that, that works right through any ages that we mm -hmm. work with. We don't need the language. When we do the adult psychotherapy, when we study adult, um, then you cannot work with children yeah so yeah, yeah. this is more intensive in a way because this observation is included yeah. and then the therapy so if say for example if i was working somewhere else a younger person a student um, is working five days a week um, they will need to think about um, the finances of course um, the, the personal therapy which could be anything from 55 to 70 pounds a week um, and then um, then when when we do two years of mother and baby observation we need that time uh, then the toddler observation so you need a lot of time to actually take out from the normal work if they yeah. are doing it right yeah, During yeah, yeah. So I, and i dangerous. yeah no thank you thank you I, i've and i did look around a little bit around psychotherapists and so i am aware that you can work in um hospitals yes. in um prison prisons you can work in university schools so it's a support capacity isn't it i mean what kind of work do you do is it one-to-one -one? Okay. is it um you know private care what what is that what mm -hmm. do you do so once once i mean i still sort of continue here and there with, with the schools um apart from my pri private work however i also work with a, a charity family organization which mostly deals with um, um refugee children and and parents and mothers and who's gone undergone through a massive trauma and and this this is the benefit that i was mentioning that we we don't need that language the training in integrative uh, child and adolescent is is like no, even non verbal so through creative um arts and paint and puppets and you know we we can communicate that's mm -hmm. that's the channel for us so that's how i work with children one to one um uh, in groups i work yeah. with the, uh, mothers uh, yeah without the language just to express themselves what the trauma and what they've been through so mm -hmm. i support them there and then i also work um, with the elderly asian uh, women's association they are all over 70 um, asian ladies uh, and um, yeah it is the first time they have had this opportunity mm -hmm. to really narrate their whole story the their life their you know migration and adaptation and pain mm -hmm. and adjustment and yeah so it's very rewarding and i suppose you've taken some time i mean how many years have you been working in the field to build up this portfolio uh it's about seven years okay okay seven years yeah and I, i'm still still working and like i mentioned that i didn't stop at my masters of child and adolescent psychotherapy uh, whilst i was tra uh, working after training whilst i was working with parents uh, mm -hmm. i i realized that really uh, the child then goes from whether a school or anywhere uh, to the home to the home environment so we need to have a very um, holistic view and holistic mm -hmm. way of working um, and then i i'm still studying um, 65 and, still studying. <laughs> and i've done another one a family practitioner at the tavistock so i'm still studying that's amazing um, yeah so in, in order to to work with the entire family not just the child mm -hmm. you know it will i will call in the child the siblings yeah it's it's, 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 it's lovely to hear family. that you're you're still studying and and yeah. i suppose you'll continue to study and never give up because yeah. it just enlightens and it's a different world and it keeps really stimulated uh, people yeah. around you and it's just yeah, yeah. 
great. Really great. Okay, we just, have the opportunity. So, <laughs> on that note, we, we're just going to take a quick break um, yeah. and then we'll be right back to the viewers as soon as we've um, had a, a short break. Okay, thank you. Thank you. دار الحديث لاتيفيا an islamic secondary school in east london ادرس في دار الحديث اللاتيفيا احب مدرستي لاني اتعلم not only do we have the islamic sciences but we are also able to offer the national curriculum such as maths english and science rated good by ofsted with outstanding behavior and attitudes personal development and leadership and management the teachers at our school are very hard working and caring and there is always a positive safe and secure atmosphere in and around our school admissions are now ongoing secure a place today visit us at 1 Cornwall Avenue London E2 I help my plants to grow my performance demands competence photography is my passion accountancy is my profession We, Mahbub & Co, a team of dedicated professionals. Mahbub & Co Accountants Welcome back viewers and just a reminder we're here with Anna Patel who's a psychotherapist and she's giving us insights into her career. Um, Anna, um, hello again. Hi. <laughs> okay, um, so before the break we were talking a lot about um, you know how the career, what it involves, the kind of um, what the job looks like and, and your journey of how you um, entered this career. Um, what I'd like to now just focus a little bit about and get some insights from you is just um, in terms of how what your experience is about the kind of communities that you've worked with um just that i know that with psychotherapy psychology just um psychologists and counseling they're very underrepresented represented by our communities so there's not lots of people that go into those professions so what would you say to try and encourage um more people to enter those professions so that we are sort of represented more Okay, so uh, like I mentioned uh, about my my own experience and and uh, coming from a, a different culture, beliefs, uh, language, and how how it can be difficult to be sort of uh, to be understood. So there is this place where and and a place to study and where it is not sort of allocated or we don't take um, the awareness of, of it, what, what is psychotherapy about. And I think the word psycho in, in many languages means um, equivalent to sort of mad, at least in, in my kind of when I was growing up. But it's, it's, it's something much more because um, it's really, we cannot really separate the mind and the body, right? And that's, that's where I think the understanding um, needs to be really understood that, um, that the issues like what I mentioned, say depression and all that, it's, it's how it affects everywhere in, into the body and whether it's arthritis or things like that so it's it's a lifelong thing um this study is not just about external thing it's about it's about the mind it's about mm -hmm. the well-being mm -hmm. and mental health yeah and unless unless we are aware that mind and body is connected because my understanding previously was also external if i fell down i would put a plaster or something like that but yeah. when it is internal pain it it shows us it shows us through our body you know like headache yeah. tummy yeah. ache and things like that and yeah. and really we should really connect that and and the yeah environment. absolutely absolutely and i suppose it's important as well that um, especially amongst asian communities to have psychotherapists and psychologists and counselors that are of the same ethnicities just so that there's a there's a spiritual understanding a belief system yes. our cultures yes. so Definitely. that the people that you are yeah the people that you are going to for support um also have a uh, some form of connection and understanding of where you're coming from do, do yes. i mean do you find that that's a benefit to you and do you attract more people um from asian um, communities as a result of that Yes, I do definitely, and and the more, like I said, even the um, the 
ages about 65 and so so on mm -hmm. but yes i do and especially with um, adolescence because there is that gap um and they've been born and brought up here whilst we were in india or east africa and there lies the uh, sort of a difference in they want to sort of uh, fit in born and you know fit, fit in here and perhaps maybe we are on this side we're trying mm -hmm. to hold on to that of course we need to hold on to you know what we we would like to but in a way that really does not get stuck and we have closed walls on that because our children especially the adolescents they have to be here they have to be part of the community yeah. with us and around them so i think we uh, the uh, the referrals that I get, especially from the parents about adolescence, is more about this sort of dispute. And unless we feel understood both by the parents and, and the youngsters, it's it's an asset. It's an yeah, asset, yeah. really. And I really feel that uh, because we we also believe sort of um, about stigma and, con you know, confidentiality, but it's a very confidential uh, profession. And and let's not have that uh, you know my message is um, not let's not stick on to the stigma what the people would say the community yeah. society because our health is important our children yeah. is important and, and yeah. i suppose most mental health is important because yes. i don't think we focus enough on that yeah um one of the things i wanted to pick up with you is um because i do a lot of work in colleges with um students where english is their second language um and, and they struggle they struggle with just understanding um, the concepts, understanding the language structures. I mean, with you having English as a second language, how did you um, overcome that barrier in terms of understanding, you know, the reports that you might have to write, the, the studying that you have to do? Um, so, so tell us a little bit about that, that. What strategy did you use to overcome some of those barriers? I, I think what comes in the forefront right now is is uh, you know to stay focused and dedicated in the sense i mean i was never afraid you know we, we cannot be perfect we can be good enough right in all our fields we can be good enough and i wasn't afraid i wasn't afraid to ask and i can't stress more that um the therapy uh, the organization that i studied as well as tavistock there is a student support there ha there is a lot of things even for in bilingual and english not as a first language mm -hmm. but just to stay focused and and not bring blame shame and think all those kind of things into it it was very very difficult because once again you know my understanding and as i grew you know it's also the slowness of it a technology yes so i can name several things that even now i mean you know the difficulties that i would have maybe it would be slightly different from the younger ones but we do have that but to mm -hmm. be, be consistent and and carry on and be passionate if what i can really say is when we are passionate about something to stay focused on that right and life throws lots of not just in studies you know it lots of things you know, difficulties as we grow older and it's about that resilience and this is mm -hmm. what psychotherapy is about it it kind of works through this these patterns by restructuring and reprogramming that's why it's longer um, for our child and children and adolescents to sort of um, adapt to the ways whatever the life throws on us and not yeah. get stuck yeah yeah when no, i absolutely. Get, like, suffer absolutely. from anxiety depression addiction yeah 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 i mean we talk about things. passion for the actual um you know the career the, the the work that you do i mean i can feel the passion <laughs> i can feel it yeah it's rewarding um, and humbling yeah oh absolutely i'm reading some of the comments coming in and and it's just i mean you, you know people are really proud of you um and and the, the message that you're sharing as well it's obviously very inspiring um i mean you've talked you've talked about um the work that you've done and um and I can see from the comments, people are interested in knowing a bit more about that. You know, how have you improved lives? What what work have you been doing that? I mean, what are the benefits that you see coming out of this? OK, so like like I mentioned that there is a tears as a child and adolescent psychotherapist. Uh, it's um, a, a tiered way. So if I begin with, say, as early as as we are, you know, um, 
before even uh, birth, when we are in our, uh, the mother's tummy, um, it starts from there, the brain, uh, the building of the brain and everything connecting and it just begins from there. So our health personally um, as a mother to be a mindset is very important. So I work with uh, say couples who, who are planning uh, during the pregnancy, how important the health is, right? Because mm -hmm. it's all just as the nourishment, all, all that is also going into the child. And it's yeah. really, really, we need to be. And then even after birth, because they can be post, you know, depression and things feeding attachment. Yeah. Um, and we all bring our experiences and history, each one of us, and th that will impact on what we do, what we say, how we behave uh, with the children, uh, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and that's what uh, they will perceive us as, as whatever they perceive us, right? We can be the best parents and it's very difficult job to be a parent. And, and what they perceive as a baby is, might not be uh, right, yeah. wrong or anything like that. But it's that, that late pattern, the early experiences, goes right through our adult age so yeah. if i see the adult now i see the adult in the body but i see the baby or the child or, or all that and that's how i work sometimes <coughs> we are 16 and 18. i work with an 18 year old but that's the chronicle age and psychological age yeah, is not the same it would be 14. so yeah. the work also lies say say with a younger child i would use all the creative stuff because uh, it's difficult for a child to express emotions and or, or, or name it, yeah. And so mm -hmm. they will, the way they play, the way they place things in the sand tray or with puppets, and you know, we, we will take a role of something. And if they are safe, they come from a domestic violence family mm -hmm. or adoption, yeah. right? And they will yeah. show me in there. So the, their landscape is is there. Yeah, yeah, I could, absolutely. you can try and read. With adolescent, because it's according to the stages, they have different kind of issues, not just we, we will put under one that hormone, but it's a different kind, but they still need that safety and security with their parents. They need, they are detaching and sometimes uh, we think differently that, oh, they don't love us anymore. You know, sometimes yeah, absolutely. Culturally we believe yeah. that, but it's, it's, it's not that they need that separation individualization mm -hmm. but they need us as parents and mistakes can happen i see adolescent as as an exploratory stage mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. see them as 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 problem kind of yeah. thing yeah. and yeah. i think that's where the work lies yeah, yeah, they can no, really absolutely, read absolutely. Us. They can really read yeah, us. Yeah. Well, you've also applied, I suppose, that learning into your own family. Um, yes. Just because I can see the comments coming up, even from your daughter Mira, that how proud she is of you and the work that you yeah. you're doing. You know, um, yeah. so they're obviously very, very proud of you. Um, yeah. So, so before we close the show, um, just could you share um, just sort of maybe one of your highlights from the career? That what is it that you really loved about this career and the work that you do? Um, I the work that I like uh, or I'm really pulled towards this is is the diverse experiences that they bring um, uh, into the therapy room and how in the safeness and of the therapy room and, and the therapeutic relationship, how the different parts or different cells, because they, they can be distorted, fragmented, to, to, to co-create and, and bring them together into, into more cohesive self, if yeah. I can say. Yeah. Yeah, and to never separate sort of the mind and the body, to keep that in mind mm -hmm. and, and not to separate the individual uh, from the environment or the system. Because yeah. after all, it is a biopsychosocial model. Absolutely. We cannot separate each into it. It's, it's entangled. Yeah. So we need okay. to look at everywhere, all directions. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. I learned so much from you and I hope thank this you. was useful for our viewers as well. Um, so really, really thank you for coming on the show. Um, so th that's the end of it for today. And um, I hope to see you with um, another guest, and another useful career path um, in two weeks time. Thank you. And thank you for TV3 for hosting the show. Thank you. Mm hmm.
دار الحديث لتيفيا an Islamic secondary school in East London أدرس في دار الحديث اللتيفيا أحب مدرستي لأني أتعلم Not only do we have the Islamic sciences but we are also able to offer the national curriculum such as maths, English and science Rated good by Ofsted with outstanding behavior and attitudes personal development and leadership and management The teachers at our school are very hard working and caring and there is always a positive, safe and secure atmosphere in and around our school Admissions are now ongoing Secure a place today Visit us at 1 Cornwall Avenue, London, E2 Are you a first-time property buyer? Are you a homeowner looking to raise funds from your property? Are you looking for better mortgage deals? Look no further. Benico Financial Services is the answer. From residential mortgage to commercial mortgage, Islamic mortgage, or limited company mortgage, we provide mortgage services that best suit your needs. Let us help you to find the right mortgage for you. Call us today on 0208-050-2478 for a better future awaits you. Benico Financial Services Limited is directly authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.